Hello, today I'm joined by Frankie Foster again to go through Thursday's seven races on the ITV7 free-to-play game that sees five races from the third day of the Cheltenham Festival and two from Down Royal in Northern Ireland. And hopefully we can come up with some winners to help you land the £300,000 jackpot on offer for Thursday's ITV7 game. By joining our free-to-play ITV7 league, you'll be able to compete throughout the rest of the Cheltenham Festival for £100 cash prize each day alongside other superb jackpot prizes up for grabs across the week and an extra £500,000 on the final day of the festival if managing to land the Gold Cup winner. So Frankie, we've done two of these now. Hopefully we found some nice winners. Um, yeah, we picked out a few. I mean, it's been a, it's been a, been a few a few days for the Panthers, really. Shorties yeah. are coming in, so I think, I think, I think that's going to be the theme. I'm going to stick with a few shorties today. Yeah, long, long may it continue. So we'll jump into the first race and the Turner's Novices uh, Chase and at uh, 1.30 and it sees only four runners go to post. And I think this has got to be a first for a long time anyway at the Cheltenham Festival for a big race like this, only seeing four runners. Well, we, we, we suspected there might only be two runners and I think yeah. there probably only is two runners in the punter's eyes <laughs> um, to go for. But who have you gone for, Frankie, in this first one? Well, I've I've changed from I've I've been a Bob Ollinger fan all along um, on pure engine and you know a bit more of a turn of foot over two mile three, but I'm looking outside the window now and it hasn't rained that much. It's quite quick ground, um, and if you watch the racing over the last couple of days, these you know especially if you watch the, watch the article when Edward Stones won, he's winning that from jumping really. He's winning that from a clear round, being able to jump and continue to gallop on at a high speed. And I think galloping the Shomets may be able to get Bob Ollinger in a bit of trouble if Bob doesn't jump with as much fluency. And I think it's going to be all about fluency of jumping and, and pardon the pun, but <laughs> being able to gallop and keep jumping and keep galloping. So, uh, yeah, galloping the Shomps. Although I've been a Bob Ballinger fan all along on this slightly quicker and drier ground, and based off of what we've seen the, the first few days, I'm going to go with Gallop and the Shops on this one. I think this, you can have two opinions on this race, and there's two ways to look at it. I think you've gone from that Gallop, Gallop in uh, the Shops standpoint and from the jumping aspect, yeah. where we are going with Bob Ollinger from, as you mentioned, the gears aspect. Um, yeah. He's a superstar, Bob Ollinger. He's unbeaten his last five. His only ever loss has come to Fernie Hollow, and we know how good that horse is. Um, a really smart hurdler. We're in the grade one, Lawler's a nice, and obviously heard And then when obviously went to the Cheltenham Festival last year in the Ballymore and absolutely hosed up, beating Brave Man's Game and Gayard de Manil, who are both nice horses in their own right. Sent over fences this season. Um, and he's been slaughtered for his jumping. And he probably hasn't jumped as well as Galloping and other horses like Brave Man's Game, Long Press and people like uh, horses like that. But I still think he's got getting better and better with each run. And he's he's won emphatically, really, in both runs. If he's still in contention coming to the last week Galloping, he wins. That, I think it's as simple as it is. But the, the problem we might have from our side is that the jumping aspect of Galloping might be far too good and he might be away. That's what I mean. The two opinions have on it. We're going to go yeah. for Bob. We'll go for Galloping. And if if one of us doesn't have a winner in this race... I, <laughs> yeah, I think we call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Think, yeah. Oh, so, God. Moving on to the second race on the ITV7 game. And this week, away from Cheltenham on, on the Thursdays, the first one's from Down Royal. And it's the maiden hurdle of a two mile and a half a furlong. Um, Frankie, both races are tough on the ITV7 game, forward from Dan Roll, but who do you go for in this one? They are. Um, this one may be slightly less to look at and try and decipher, you know, you've only got a couple or, or one or even I think there might be a couple of unraced in here. To, uh, so there's not a whole lot to go off um, on that. You take a bit of credit for trainers, um, Gordon Elliott. It being the man that's hopefully going to get the job done with the wrecking ball, Paul, a good, a good name there, I think, uh, for me. Just ran to a good RPR of 115, ran in a Division 1 first time out. He's got to learn a bit for that. Um, if you look at all of the horses in here, their, their numbers will improve for their runs. And this horse has come in and posted an RPR of 115, which is around the level of some of these horses on their third and fourth run. He did that on his first. Um, so you'd hope for a bit of improvement. Gordon Elliott, obviously top trainer. Um, so the man to side with on, on, on these sometimes when you don't know the whole story. Um, so yeah, Wrecking Ball Paul, um, I'm going to go with. Yeah, 
we join you in here, Wrecking Ball Paul. I think, as you said, fine third of 18 on debut at Navin over two miles, running to a very similar level to that some of them have ran on three or four runs, like you said. Um, it's a very, very hard race to pick from because there is a lot of unknowns, but it does look look to be between him and last time out winning Imperial Ruler. Um, but he's getting over a stone in weight from that horse. And I just think, yeah. as you say, when you look at big trainers in this sort of race, he's Gordon Elliott's not far away. And I think, yeah, he's a solid selection in this race. So moving back over to Cheltenham and maybe just as tough a race is the uh, Potemus Network final handicap hurdle <laughs> over three miles. First handicap of the day uh, on the Thursday at Cheltenham. Plenty of runners, plenty of well handicapped horses going to post. Frank, who have you come down on? This is another that, unfortunately, my selection um, is not going to run. So I, a bit of a, don't have too much of an opinion. Um, and I'm hoping, I, I, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but would this be Fergal's first festival winner if Anna Philippe won? It, it would, yeah. And it's, it, yeah. it's amazing, really, for how close Fergal trains to Cheltenham. Yeah. Well, how many it's winners not, he has at Cheltenham, just not the yes, festival? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it would be. So, but you, so you're going with Ala Philippe? Yeah, Ala Philippe, um, hopefully to get her first festival win for Fergal. Um, he's put in some great form behind decent horses in, in graded races and one three eight. It's not the highest of marks. Um, finished actually fifth behind Statler at Cheltenham, who won for Willie Mullins on day <laughs> day one. Day one. <laughs> getting getting confused with all these very days. Um, yeah, so I think that form at Cheltenham. Um, Fergal hasn't had a festival winner, but he does perform very, very well at Cheltenham and his horses perform well at Cheltenham. So I think it's just been him rising through the ranks as a trainer and he had his best season to date last year. He's in great form again this year. He's got some smart horses, so there's there's absolutely no reason why he can't here with Ala Philippe. Yeah, definitely got a big chance. And we are going for a different horse, but following a similar line of form. Um, we're going with Cider Burley. Um, even though... It's, uh, the horse is a 10-year-old now. If you look, I'm, I'm just going to talk through some points that are really, really, why I really like this horse. And 10-year-old just put, like, put us off slightly because you don't see horses at this age normally win the, at the festival, especially in races like this. You normally find a novice who's progressive, but this horse has got a lot going for him. So he's been a superstar, really, for the Gordon Elliott Yard uh, and J.P. McManus. He won this event in, tw uh, in 2019 off a marker 145. Came back the year after off seven pounds higher of 152 and won it again, which was remarkable. That ride off Barry Geraghty that day was something like I've never seen. I don't know how he got up, but it was a great ride. <laughs> so on seasonal debut last term, it won, it won the Liz Mullen hurdle when it normally needs a run. So they were obviously thought they were going to have a good season with the horse. He then went on to finish third in the grade one Christmas hurdle. That was won by Florin Port that then went on to win the Stayers hurdle. And with Cider Burley going to the Sayers Hurdle last season, finishing second, that was a really, really good run. He just loves Cheltenham, loves staying on. Um, this term, he looks to be in very similar form, but it looks as though the Potemps was set up from the start. Um, second in the Liz Mullen Hurdle to get himself going. He was he was pulled up in the uh, Grade 1 Christmas Hurdle. They might, might have refigured then and thought, yeah, definitely Potemps. He was sent to Warwick in the race with Alaphilippe and finished fourth, which got him qualified, it's all you need to do. And it was weird to see a horse of his calibre and he, the British handicapper dropped him two pounds for that. I thought he's played right into the hands of what Elliot wanted to do, if you know what I mean. Um, off a mark of 156 now, so four pounds higher than when he won the race uh, two years ago. But with Rob James taking seven pound off, he's effectively off a mark of 149, which I think makes him really, really dangerous. Twice a course and distance winner, finished second in the stairs hurdle. I think he's got an absolutely huge chance. I really, really do. In a, in a, in a Potemps, if you look for the field, that's not the strongest Potemps yeah. ever. Um, I just think he's got a really, really good chance. It on you if, you. If, that, if that wins Thursday then, James. Oh, <laughs> I hope so. But <laughs> I can't get away from his mark of 149 with the seven pounds off. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that is uh, our selection for that one. So the final one at Down Royal on the ITV7 game for Thursday it's a handicap hurdle over two mile four. And I don't think don't think you'll see a trickier race across any car <laughs> all week to have a look at. It's an absolute minefield. But well, we need to put up a selection anyway for the free to play uh, game. So Frankie, if you, if you come down on. 
the name of this horse is, is pretty much uh, my feelings on this handicap. I don't get it. <laughs> 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 that, that, that's, that's what I'm going with. Jesus, it's hard work. Um, I'm going with a horse that has got a lot of experience and has ran fair share um, at Down Royal. I think a couple of runs up there, one of them being third. And a lot of form on soft ground, which is handy as it is soft currently. Um, scheduled to be soft and as things normally go in Ireland, it, <laughs> it normally rains more than here. So I'd, I'd hedge on it going soft or soft or, or heavy as opposed to, to drying out anymore. Um, yeah, lot, lots of form on soft, heavy ground. And his mark's relatively unchanged, or maybe even dropped slightly from a poor run last time out. Now, same mark of 86, but a £2 claim run in Ryan Mayne, who's actually been riding well this year. Um, a decent jockey. So we're going with I don't get it. Decent RPRs. Post, uh, you know, it's a, it's a dodgy old field, isn't it? You've got some in here, like, running to some very, very low marks as I'm flicking through. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Uh, I never know if you should really use this term, but a bit of a donkey derby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, yeah. Th there's there's n there's not much that strikes me and and i'm trying to pull one out um but yeah i don't get it four months off ground ran some decent races and has a two pound claimer on who's who's riding well this year yeah it's not like we said at the top of this it's a very very tough race um the one we've come down on is me's rafter um has some leading form really in the race i'll buy there's not much form on offer to have a look at, really. But this Mies Rastair, last two runs, was a good third of 16 at Punchestown over a similar trip, then back that up with a close fourth at Goan Park last time out. Looks one of the more likely winners at the weights and on form. And with not a lot to go off in this race, I think this Mies Rastair should be in the frame, personally. Uh, right, moving back on to the better racing. And one of the... <laughs> One of the big races of the festival for many, with it seeing uh, a big banker for many, is the Ryanair Chase. Um, nine runners go to post, but Alaho at the top of the market been solid for a long, long time up there. Are you sticking with Alaho or are you looking for value elsewhere, Frankie? No, I definitely wouldn't be looking for value, especially if we're just trying to find a winner and look at the you know prices aside. I, God, I can't see Alaho beat. If he puts in a performance that's, Three quarters of what he did last year. I think he could win this. Um, yeah, I really do think it's an absolute banker of the week. And after day one, it, you know, it's uh, be be hopeful that it's going the, the punter's way on these bankers. And I don't think Alaho would change that, that's for sure. So, yeah, I can't, literally can't see anything getting close, to be honest. Yeah, completely agree. Alaho, he's been the banker, the Irish banker for many, and he really, yeah. winner of the race last year, absolutely emphatic, 12 lengths win. Like that, I think personally, that was the performance of the festival last year. It was mm. absolutely brilliant. This year, he, he, he normally needs the run first time out. And when he went into the grade one, John Durkin Memorial Chase at Punchestown, he went from the front, wasn't caught, was absolutely brilliant. And then he went on last time to win the same grade two at, Thurl, at Thurls that he won before taking the race last year. Everything's gone right for him this year. As you said, if he runs to anywhere near the same level and even probably five or six pounds below that, yeah. he'll win this. Um, and hopefully for many people who have gone him in the Akers, he keeps rolling over and he might be the last one for many. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine he's the last leg for a lot of Akers, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully he does that for punters. And it would be, I think it'd be the biggest shock of the festival if that, if that horse was beat, yeah. personally. Um, so we'll move on to the stairs hurdle and we've covered this race in all our previews multiple times now. I think we've cut, we've, we've called it the nutters hurdle, haven't we? we <laughs> it's got, it's got so many horses in there that want to have beaten each other or oh. think they're going to be superstars, then run flat. So who have you come down on? Because it's a tricky race. It's a very tricky race. It'd be an exciting one to watch. Um, and like you said, it's, it's muddled form, isn't there? We've all beaten each other in varying ways and there's been some you know, bizarre starts with Florin Porter, Classical Dream, Paisley Park, and, you know, giving lengths away here then being beaten there. It's an absolute muddle at the top of the market. I'm staying loyal to Paisley Park. Um, a couple of reasons. One being, I'm hoping Classical Dream and Florin Porter take each other on up front, and that would set the race up perfectly for the way that Paisley Park, when he wins, wins his races, um, you know, as we know, being chased along and then staying on up the hill. So that would set him up perfectly. And, and the second is, if you do look at this muddled form, we're calling it, there's lots of these horses that I've put in a good run and then been disappointed next time out. And it's a bit up and down. 
Paisley Park has been progressive this year. So although we can say, oh, he got beat by Champ, but then beat Champ, and it looks to kind of say, oh, well, what's going on there? If you look at him progress through the year, he was actually pretty disappointing. I think it was up at Weatherby first time out, and he was slightly better um, at maybe Newbury, then better at Ascot, then better still at Cheltenham, and I'd say he's going to be better still at the festival. So where some are very hit and miss, he has been on a steady incline this year, and you know they'll be peaking for Cheltenham. He took the same route um, running at Cheltenham in, on New Year's Day uh, or Trials Day. Uh, I can't think when that one is, um, as he did when he's won the stairs before. And he looks he looks primed for this. I know he's old, but, you know, the stats aren't everything. He, he looks in good form, doesn't he? Yeah, Paisley would just be one of them, another story, wouldn't it, from, that would come out this week, that he'd just be absolutely brilliant for the trainer, for the owner um, and the horse, because what a horse Paisley Park is. I think everyone loves that horse. But saying that, we do want to find a winner. <laughs> and I, I, I do, and we are I'm going talking to with my heart, aren't I? <laughs> we, 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 we are going for Time Hill. Um, he's a horse with a big chance, we think, going well fresh. And he looks to have everything, like, a bit like Paisley and a bit like some of the other horses. He, everything's gone towards this. This has been the end game. And I feel like Philip Hobbs knows how to get a horse right for these sort of events. Um, last year, we saw him winning the Grade 1 Stairs Hurdle at Aintree, uh, Grand National Meeting. Um, after skipping this race with a little bit of a setback. This year, return in France, uh, or, or toy, and it was such a strange race. The ground was heavy. He didn't jump the bigger French hurdles very well, finished fifth or seven. I think he was f uh, over 40 lengths behind the winner. It was, it was something to put behind him. Back to his best and when first seen in Britain this season at Ascot, narrowly being beaten by the champ in the grade one long walk hurdle, finished second in that race for two consecutive years now. So they aren't bad runs at all with the other one when he looked to beat Paisley Park and Paisley chinned him on the line. Um, he'll be prime, as I said, he'll be primed for this race. He knows the, well, he knows the course over the three mile, finishing a close fourth in the Albert Bartlett two years ago. Um, he's a child. He's always going to be there, isn't he? He's going to be in the yeah, frame. He's always going to be in the mix. And we just think at the, like at the current prices and for the little bit fresh break since December, he could be the one. But like we've said, it's a very tough one, but we're going to, Pin it down on Time Hill. So the last race on Thursday's ITV7 free-to-play game is the Grade 3 Plate Handicap Chase. Um, a race, again, we've talked in depth about in other previews uh, on our channel. Uh, but Frankie, who are we going with? Um, sticking with a favourite, you know. Um, it will be <laughs> it will be a favourite stage if you go with me. Um, Salubra Dalen, I just think his mark is maybe below him 141 um he's looked very impressive and they had those two runs over hurdles just to keep his chasing mark down i'd imagine this year um and yeah this 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 season he just looked very very good over his fences and very progressive and i'd imagine especially if you know they're running him a couple of hurdle races and then last time out at warwick there's got to be some left in the tank hasn't there <laughs> that we don't know about um but that's what i'm hoping for i think that's what a lot of people are hoping for and as you said philip hobbs knows how to get him to a festival and it does look like that was the target and when you just look at the market standalone of 141 um it's not the highest so yeah i'd be i'd be sticking with the favorable well, current favorite celebra dalem for philip hobbs yeah even even though this horse is a 10 year old it's still very lightly raced in England, isn't it? So yeah. you, think, you think he's definitely got a chance. Uh, we're going to go uh, with Imperial Alcazar for Fergal O'Brien. Decent hurdler uh, over the last two years. He looked to have a big chance last year in the Potemps before uh, getting injured in the race, having won well at Warwick. Sent chasing by Fergal O'Brien this year. Finished a sixth and second over two miles six at Newbury behind likeable mare, Silver Forever, Paul Nichols, but gave away away that day. Then he went over three miles next time out and was a good second behind Pat's fancy for Rebecca Curtis, who's a nice horse. Um, and then last time out, gave his best run to, to date at Cheltenham over the plate course and distance when winning by 10 lengths in a competitive hand, handicap chase. And although he's up seven pounds from that run for this, he's got the perfect profile for the race, as in people, horses that win that race that he won at Cheltenham before this race normally go on to finish in the frame. And we're hoping, although near the top of the weights, he's a very classy horse and we think he can go very, very close. So that's all. Good day for Fergal. 
Yeah, it could be. And obviously, we'd love Fergal to have a winner like like we've discussed previously. But yeah, that's all seven races covered for the Thursday. Frankie, thanks again. Hopefully, we picked out some winners for the £300,000 jackpot. Um, please remember to like this video and subscribe to Wizarding Clover channel with a lot of content on there now for across the week at Cheltenham. And also, don't forget to get involved with the completely free to enter ITV7 competition. Get set up in our league across the week with £100 each day to be won for finishing top and also jackpot prizes for winning the actual ITV7. So good luck to everyone who gets involved. And Frankie, cheers again. Cheers, James.